I've had some experiences with math teaching and learning, and today I'm going to talk to you about your responsibilities as a gatekeeper in mathematics. I want us all to take responsibility for opening the gate to mathematics. My talk is about you and to you, about whether you're parents, the math anxious, or future math science and teachers, or anyone who's felt confident or fearful about your potential for success in mathematics. My professor Howard Johnson at Syracuse University 32 years ago said to this C student, if you like math, why not consider teaching mathematics? He said, let's figure out what we need to do to help you succeed in mathematics. I was a senior in college, thinking about graduation and trying to figure out what my next steps might be. Dr. Johnson helped me find the opening to the gate. He helped me cross the gate. Now take a look at the pictures and think about the last positive experience you had with mathematics. What are the characteristics? What are the qualities of that experience? Hold on to that experience. Now, some of you won't be able to think of a positive experience that you had with mathematics. If so, well, then think about which gate symbolizes your perceptions and experiences around math. Select the gate of interest and think about what that gate symbolizes for you. Hold on to that vision. Think about the images as we talk. Do you think that the private thoughts that you have in your head could influence your performance in mathematics? A research psychologist did something very devious. Late one night, he secretly crept into his lab and he hung signs on all of the rat cages. Some of the signs said that the rat in the cage was incredibly smart, and some of the signs on the cages said that the rat was incredibly done, even though none of those things were true. The experimenters viewed these signs, and the psychologist eventually figured that the expectations that the experimenters had in their heads actually translated into a whole set of tiny behaviors. The expectation subtly changed the way that the experimenters touched the rat, and then in turn, the way that the rats behaved. So when the experimenters thought that the rat was really smart, they felt more warmly towards the rat and touched them more carefully. In our world, you may be standing further away from someone you have lower expectations for. You may not be getting eye contact. Expectations really do influence behaviors. Teacher expectations can lower or raise a student's IQ. A parent who says, I hate math, can influence another child's perception of their own potential we can all be responsible for learning mathematics. As we go through the world, the expectations of other people constantly act on us, literally making us stronger or weaker, smarter or dumber, faster or slower. In many countries, the ability to do math is assumed to be attributed to the amount of effort people put into learning. In contrast, in the United States, we're more likely to assume that ability, typically based on standardized test scores, is much more important than effort. And it's socially acceptable and often even desirable not to put forth effort in learning mathematics. We have some ingrained perceptions about what it means to learn mathematics with some struggle. Teachers in some countries believe that it's desirable for students to struggle a little bit before assuming that 
um, they can't do the math. And my tape just went off. Take a look at some of the perceptions on the slide. Men are better at math than women. Raise your hand if you believe that's true. Great, there are no hands. There's a best way to do a math problem. Sometimes with the Common Core we think that, but often it's more important to be able to do the problem and have some satisfaction around that. Some people have a math mind and others do not. No, we all have a math mind. We all are responsible for the, le the learning that we can, we can do. It's bad to count on your fingers. Actually, I see people counting under their desk when they think that you you're not watching, but that means you actually understand arithmetic better than someone else who's just doing it via rote. Those good in math do problems quickly in their heads? Absolutely not. I'm getting a little sick of always having to do the 15% or the 20% at the restaurant. Just because you do math doesn't mean that you always can do arithmetic really quickly. We're all responsible for um, knowing mathematics. And sometimes people think, oh my goodness, I don't really know very much. I don't have, I don't do math fast enough. I don't have a math mind. I got the right answer, but I did it in the wrong way. If I get it right, they beat themselves up and they say, oh my goodness, it was too simple. Math is unrelated to my life. Now, that's a game that people play because they think, because I think I can't do it, if I say it's not related to my life, then it won't be as important and I can move on to other things. But it closes the door to multiple opportunities if we believe it's unrelated to our lives. We know it's related to our lives. So what's at stake? Well, we know about the STEM pipeline. We know about opportunities to learning. But this is about building capacity. We are responsible, not just the teachers, not just parents, but everyone who's ever had a negative thought in their head about why they can't do mathematics. Think about the next generation. What do we want for the next generation? We want them to understand that they also have capacity. Um, mathematics is not just for the people who have positions that require mathematics all the time. I see math as an inclusive instrument. We know how to be successful in math. There's lots of excellent research that says it's got to be about brain-based learning and standards-based curriculum and problems, a problem-solving approach. Between grade four and 12, there's a steady decline in math achievement. There's, there are lots of studies that reinforce that. What's really happening? Is it that we don't believe that struggle is important in mathematics, or is it that we're not willing to take a chance and get more people to come into the fold? There are three different ways of also learning mathematics. Engage preconceptions. I talked to you about some of the math myths. You've got to learn both facts and concepts. It's not just about memorizing. It's also about understanding how that math is used. And the last one, a metacognitive approach um, to self-monitoring. Remember when you learned how to ride a bike? No one had to tell you that you knew how to ride that bike. No one had to tell you that the problem was correct. There's a little bit of self-monitoring. So we know exactly what we need to do in order to help people learn mathematics. Expectations in your head do act to influence your behaviors. We are definitely not rats, but some of the behaviors that we have make it so that the way we're touched and the way that people interact with us do make us struggle a little bit more. Let me say this. I'm going to let you read that. Dr. Johnson's expectations help me build my capacity as a math teacher. The positive expectations and then the subsequent experiences influence my perceptions and persistence around mathematics. My advisor helped me perceive myself as a math person. Then I did the work. We're all math people. Parents, students, and teachers have to find ways to open the gate to learning. No matter what you believe, based on your perceptions about learning, consider your role and responsibility to the next generation. Think about the gates as opportunities to view the other side. What is preventing you or your loved ones from meeting your full potential in mathematics? When I see the gates, 
I worry about who controls the gate and who has access to the gate and who does not have access. I worry about my role at the gate and how I can provide a better pathway to learning. Gates require tending unless it's open, but sometimes gates are open, but on the other side, there's an angry dog or a teacher who doesn't understand how you learn. We have to take responsibility for the mediation for what it takes to be successful on the other side. Our expectations and our perceptions and our persistence are how we mediate even the open gate, even what's perceived as open access. Gates provide a view to the other side unless someone has convinced you that they don't want you to pass through the gate. George Polius said, a math teacher is a midwife to ideas. A great discovery solves a great problem, but there's a grain of discovery in the solution of any problem. Your problem may be modest, but if it challenges your curiosity and brings into play your inventive faculties, and if you solve it by your own means, you may experience the tension and enjoy the triumph of discovery. You are a gatekeeper. We're all gatekeeper, gatekeepers. Your perceptions, expectations, and persistence about learning math are about opening access. As a gatekeeper, you can take responsibility for opening the gate. Keep only the positive experiences you've had in mathematics and use the secret password as the key to the open gate. Acts, we're accepting all passports at all the gates. Oh. The pearly gates. Know that you have nine lives. Thank you for your attention. <laughs>